morning, Dave. Good morning. Fix my speakers and stuff here and get something to drink. So. <clears throat> How do I specify which speakers WebEx uses? All of them. It doesn't. Oh. Try this. Can you say something now? Okay. I can say something now. All right. I disconnected the other speakers now, and it switched to the right ones. So let's see if it switches. Yeah, it switched back. <laughs> Dang. I plugged them back in. Um, all right. I'm going to drop and rejoin. Okay. Be right back. Hi, Hank. Hank. See the side of your head. Hey, this is Hens. So do you got a sore neck looking to the left all the time? No, because I'm also looking to the right, uh, the other half of my life. So that's compensating. What's on your right? Oh, something good. Oh. <laughs> can tell me before I turn on the recording. <laughs> the recording the recording is turned on, I think. Uh, yeah, you're right. It's automatically recording. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Not falling for that one. Hi, Dave. Something went wrong on your side. Yeah, I said anything better. Oh, oh. I remember some machine problems from yesterday also. Apparently WebEx doesn't oh. like me. Nope. Whenever I have my second monitor plugged in, it's trying to play through the second monitor's built-in speakers, which is not the oh. good speakers. Oh, that sucks. Okay. And I know how to change it in Teams and Zoom, but what, you know, let's force it to, to do uh, selecting uh, speakers from the list. But I don't know how to do it. Don't you have like um a, a mixer app that tells everything where to go? Yeah, let me it's find audio that. connection. Uh, One of the coolest things I learned how to do was um the mixer apps on uh often have a monitor, which is a an input which is the result of the output of something. And so you can you can make loops and wrap one audio of one program into the output of one program into the audio of an, another one. Peter, Andrew, welcome. Hello. Thank you, hi. You, you, yeah, see, yeah, that was a microphone <laughs> test for you. I just got <laughs> you to do a microphone test. I found it, I can hear everybody in the well now, so. All right, wonderful, Dave. Um, so, I guess I'll just give, uh, I did not, don't know if I, I know that Way knows about this meeting. I don't know if he'll make it being 10 p.m. Friday night there. Um, We got I think it's four, yeah, yeah. four yeses and Ned was a yes. <clears throat> it was 11 p.m. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah. Uh, seeing as they don't do... Uh, Time zone changes. Time zone changes, which I like. Apparently, we're just waiting for New York to decide. Our our attorney general has been empowered to change the ta to change our time zone as soon as New York decides what to do. <clears throat> so, hoping for Ned. Maybe we won't get him. So, um, <clears throat> as I said, oh, there's Ned. Hi, Ned.
calling Ned. Ned has the wrong speakers, probably, too. Can you hear me? Yes, we can now. Great. Okay, so um, first things, uh, thanks for coming today. Uh, I I picked today because we'd often used it, and um, uh, I wanted to get things going again once we saw... Um, um what's his name uh rowan roman's um uh review um and i wasn't sure if i could do next week because uh there's a ripe meeting all all week uh, also, but actually you are me so friday would be, but tuesday tuesday wouldn't be right correct correct early right before, yeah monday wednesday or monday tuesday wednesday would all not be holidays, although I often have other meetings at this time on other days of the week. So. Okay, so I, I set, uh, um, I didn't think I could do next week on Tuesday, which is why I picked today. Um, yes. But then I realized that actually it would, it, it, I, it, I could step away from the right meeting and it would be fine. So I did put one in on Tuesday, but to be sure I put one in, I sent an invitation for Tuesday, November 30th as well. Um, that was our traditional time. Hank convinced me that yep. th that's probably a good time. Um, so if you can't make it next Tuesday, then, oh, well, um, but for sure by the 30th, I hope everyone's available for that. I, just, I can do either or both. Uh, so I'm hoping I, we're going to do both. I think we'll need both. I think we'll need about four or five meetings. And I'm, I'm hoping yep. that the other sector reviews will uh, begin to come in as well. Um, I don't know if you pushed the button, Ned, or Nancy did it or not i can't uh, join next week tuesday yes you mentioned that I, and the assumption that everybody is either off or you are on right uh i i gave away that's long yeah so yeah yeah i know yeah. yeah i'm sorry i confused you that way but anyway so if we if we're if we're below uh quorum on tuesday we're below quorum between you and me and and us holidays um uh i'm wondering ned did you did did somebody request early sector reviews uh yeah nancy did uh nancy Ro did. yeah Ro okay. roman was didn't think that would speed things up at all oh. <laughs> but well depends on who we get right yeah uh whether they respond to us um yeah, I'm hoping for a gen art review and because they're usually good about readability and um, a sector review. Um, there, were, there was some discussion around what should they be reviewing and the, you know, this group was in the process of doing something. So best to get this done as quickly as possible, I think. Okay. Um, all right, so I've split up Ned's comments into I don't know a, a issues. At least there's at least twelve of them, or I don't mm -hmm. know. I didn't count them. Can't count that high. Um, and um, I'll leave that there and click on that. And uh, Hank started working on some of the responses. So, um, and I think you marked some of them as being answered I'm oh i sure. closed one the very first one i closed just force of habit and then you reopened it uh, i reopened it yeah because i just appropriately because i can't just close them <laughs> yeah no i because i wanted to make sure that everyone saw what had happened yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, it really was like wise. this is already addressed yeah. click oh wait wait wait, wait. so no um, yeah so uh, i think the uh, commit uh, wherever i thought appropriate yeah. So, okay. So I'm just going to go through the things. Ones you have commits to, you might have to guide me to, but. Um, um, yeah, I, I reviewed this one and I saw what you put up on the screen of the pull request that looked right to me. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. So um, there we go. Yes, I agree with this comment. I agree that that pull request does it and I'm good with this one. All I right. Agree. Close issue. Me too. Okay. Uh, issues. So, uh, I, I did not. I I didn't make it through all of Roman's comments reading them. Uh, I started from the top, and I noticed they got successively harder to understand without looking at the document. So, oh, like, okay, 
it, they got it, in his review the first ones he would uh like copy in the text that he was commenting on and so on and other ones like say okay i think it's see what he's getting at but i have to go and look at the text so i i didn't make it to the bottom of all of this stuff figure we just go through them today so at least right. we'll start so, going what do, we do we start do we, do we start at the bottom because that's yeah that's, that's how uh, roman yeah yeah, so, sure. so Roman's earliest review is is comment is at the bottom of the list. So that's why yeah. I wondered if you meant top no, of no, no. his list or top of this top list. of his email, top of okay. his email, okay. which is top of the document. So in 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 order as you walk through the document, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. all right. So good, all right. Let's start there then. Um, Oh, you even pasted your 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 response your comment in here. Okay, I had no idea how to answer his question, and I am fine with Hank's text. I, mean, I don't know if that was Eric's text or one of you guys' text, but uh, thank you for clarifying. Um, now that I read his uh, question, I have the same question, so. But I think Hank's text is pretty clear to me anyway. Okay. Yeah, I molded it. It's, so we're uh, good with that? <clears throat> good with that then? Yeah. Okay. Close that one. Uh, set that tab. And the, um, are the pull requests merged or do we have to approve them and merge them? Uh, you, uh, uh, I think Hank has them all on this pull request okay. and so once we've been through okay. the connections then we'll merge this one uh because he didn't do them as separate pull requests got it so it just yeah yeah okay they were so minuscule that i creating branches were too too, too tedious for me i was like no <laughs> so he suggests we remove the comments about bi biometric protocols yeah, I rent uh, IFAA and ePay, I think, or Google Pay, and no, I don't think that is necessary. Um, to I'm answer. okay with this. I think, I don't know if this came from uh, Wei or... Um, Actually, when I look at Git Blame, it comes from Dave Thaler. I don't know how that happened, but uh, I don't think that's true. So I didn't then mark the provenance of the line. And that was yeah, the yeah. Uh, I know I did not author this text because I did not yeah, have any so. knowledge of the Chinese IFAA standard or we WeChat <laughs> pay. I, yeah. I mean, if if Wei is not okay with, if it is from Wei and he is not okay with that, he will. I, I can ask him uh, directly when he's not uh, because he's not here and uh, make sure. But the overall I, the overall comment was that these would would it wouldn't age well, well without a reference. Yeah. But he yeah. was talking. Roman was talking about the uh, commercial ones. I wonder if what Chinese IFAA standard is. If that really is a standard, it should have a stable, referenceable document from someplace, right? Mm. And so we could leave Chinese IFAA standard and remove WeChat Pay and Google Pay as being the more aging ones. But I, I don't know what Chinese IFAA standard is to know that. But if there is a stable referenceable document, I have no objection to just leaving the uh, Chinese IFAA stuff in there to make the whatever the original point was. It's the Internet Finance Authentication Alliance. And there are Chinese characters everywhere on that side. Uh, so next to the English ones. And their specification text. Is no, there, is there no something you can text. find that's actually a referenceable, stable mm, link? It doesn't look that way. I mean, even if it's only Chinese, that's not a blocker, right? As long as there's a referenceable standard. Membership download. No. Not directly, as I can see, but maybe uh, one has to cross check that. But I think you have to uh, participate in order to get a document. There is a specification website, but it does not look very spe specky. Okay, so I'm going to sign it to um, Wei and yeah. see if he has a a reference for this. If so, we'll put the paragraph back in. Or at least the part of the paragraph. That paragraph, yeah, here. that's what I meant, yeah. Leave the reference back in, yeah. 
Okay, so click on that. Go here. Biometrics. What are... I'm fine with Hank's uh, proposal, but uh, if we can find a reference, then I'm fine leaving it open until next Tuesday or whatever yeah. it is that we come back. So. Um, I need more context. I need to look at the document to know what goes right before this paragraph. Are you putting this up, Michael? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. I zoomed in. That's why I can't. Uh, <laughs> so this was 3.1. Okay, two types of environment in an attester. All right, and which paragraph is this one? Okay, got it. there's no limit to. No, it's the one about that. The the one that ends there is no limit to. Okay. Uh, in a testing environment. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now now that I see the context, uh, yeah, I agree. I just want to make sure it wasn't going to uh, be incorrect in context. So yes, I, I agree with this with this uh, with his issue. Really? Okay. And that's so because we... once you start having a bunch of layers, right, the top layer could be, say, the um, operating system uh, 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 measuring the application running on top of that. And so the operating system would be a software, piece of software. Yeah. And so the only be... thing that is not a piece of software measuring could no, it's a static code root of trust. It's also code. So I don't well, really know the, if there's... what I was looking for, Hank, is this is not talking about the root of trust, right? This is talking about every pair. And so once you start having layers, then the top layers can be software measuring software, right? As long as the root at the bottom is hardware, right? But the terms here are used for every uh, set of layers going up. So, so I think what what you're saying, Dave, is that. Um, an agent could be a standard, you know, process running with some immutable privileges, which is attesting to the state of the database server. Um, yeah, so the example I'm thinking of is that, say, the OS kernel is the, yeah. is the attesting environment and, you know, your database server is the uh, target environment. Right. That's what I'm trying to say is that, yeah. that, that, that despite the fact that that's not that, you know, from a point of view of a te people that's maybe pretty weak environment the point is that it's been attested to already so we're we're good and in fact it is used point. in tes too there are tees that can run uh kernels inside and in some sense you could argue that opti on trust zone opti is the uh, kernel and it can measure uh trusted apps running inside opti so yeah even in te environments this is true but um, right. Perhaps, of course, it's not limited to that, but yes. So, even so a tested so, software agent would be a editing to the list, not software agent, not some arbitrary software agent, but a mm -hmm. a software agent that has been, um, I don't like attested, um, yeah. it tested, yeah. has been appraised as trustworthy. So, so, so it says software in the text. It does. There's if, no if, this was, if this was a normative document, the words around hardware or software would environments would be normative the mm -hmm. example would not be correct and the yeah. request is for an example that's more illustrative so, of a software thing that yeah okay i get your point that you don't need to enumerate everything in the list it's already good enough and i think you're arguing for no change ned i can live with that if there is a good example then throw it in but i don't know if there is the tss yeah. The TPM software stack lives in the OS. You could just and say an operating system or a, a virtual machine monitor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, IMA lives in the corner. I mean, a hypervisor in some sense fits that, but. Uh... Can I have a VTM, the hypervisor? Yeah. Okay. I, I think Ned has a good point. I do not have a strong opinion either way now. So I think Ned has a good counter argument. I said, Ned, I get your point to say, if you can come up with something that's a concrete example, that's fairly well known and stick it in there. If you're just trying to make up a term, don't. That's what I took as Ned's Yeah, feedback. that's my feedback. BIOS is software. We call it firmware, but yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. So, so if 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 we choose a candidate, I would uh, select the TSS. 
I think that's a very good example of software that you trust that is doing its testing. No, but the TCG declares the TSS as untrusted. But it is executed. Oh, I know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's part of the testing environment and doing the claims collection. Yeah, of course, you're correct. That's why they changed the name from trusted software stack to TPM software stack. Well, it, at least Roman uh, ends his uh, comment with a question mark and not a request. And so it's just a question. Yeah. Could be responded to an email if we choose to do that? So if we can't come up with a thing that we all agree on, then I think uh, an email response is better than the document change. I think I'm agreeing with Ned on that. So yeah, it's it's hard to have a good example eh, that everybody really is like, oh yeah, of course. Um, Should we phrase the reply? The, 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 um, the uh, paragraph. Sorry. Uh, I think there's a term in the Windows world. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking up a term to see if it's a document term. Um, I'm looking up the term Windows Secure Kernel, and I, I uh -huh. assume there's actually some uh, term in the Linux world, but I'd have to do some research to figure out what it is. Um, yeah, there's you're talking about like SE, SE Linux, or um, exactly no. The, the Windows Secure Kernel is the term for what runs actually in a separate like VTL, right? And it can measure the stuff that's in the main one. Mm -hmm. uh, SE Linux has the notion of a of a you know, security a separate security module. Yeah, but is it running in? Uh, no, it's not running elsewhere. In a separate not from the rest of the kernel. Perfect. Yeah, it's not running from a separate process context in the kernel. Yeah, so that's why I think. Yeah. I don't think Linux currently has something in the um, uh, Windows Secure Kernel category, but the things like you know uh, Opti and so on and ARM processors actually run in that same kind of context. I just don't know uh, Linux on Intel, so you may know better than me, Ned. So <clears throat> it's really there's really no magic. It's it's a ring kind of architecture. So whether you do ring minus one, which is a hypervisor, or you put everything in the OS and ring one and then put your security kernel at ring zero yeah it's sort of a mock architecture but it's all the same mechanism which is which is a, a ringed architecture um, yeah there was somebody who had done something like there was somebody who had done something um with uh pushing most of the kernel into ring one um I don't know if that was Linux or something like AIX or something like that. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, you could go, if you wanted to, to get to nail it, you could be talking about, you know, things like TXT. There's also um, hypervisors and SMM. Yeah. Hypervisor, I'm saying, uh, this is, you know, it's just, it would be just a hypervisor, but we yeah. want firmware in there so it doesn't add a new point. Um, and, uh, right now, none of those bring in anything that is uh, a vendor-specific term, and so that'd be the only that'd be the reason to not say Windows Secure Kernel because that's a Windows uh, a vendor-specific term that's in there. So, that's why I'm fine leaving it as is if we want. So, but I think Windows all right. Secure so Kernel let's move on. Let's let's um not let's not close this, but let's move it on. Okay. And um, um maybe in the response we'll find some. Okay. When we reply, we'll say, well, someone will say, well, what about something? Um, so we have these, I collected the editorial comments together. Um, and Hank has suggested a bunch of fixes. I think they're probably all exactly correct. But you have some comments here about some of them. Yeah, so here, like here this one. Was, Roman was surprised by the sudden uh, increase in detail. And yeah, that is due to the fact that we did not want to talk about rules of trust so early in the text and don't want in the glossary, that want to have a separate uh section we all had the discussion so now it is becoming more detailed when it comes up so yeah that's how it is so i'm not touching that again unless someone forces me to 
Um, I think I, on your section four response, I agree with you, yeah. and I, I just observe that he, whenever he ends up with a question, that usually means from Roman that he would be okay with no change, as long as we yeah. just explain to him what the rationale is. And so I think on a section four one with the should they be, I'm fine with uh, not doing a change there. I mean, you're hesitant to touch this again. I'm hesitant to touch it again. Okay, so we'll just answer that that way yeah. that we're hesitant to put that. I remember the long root of trust discussion and <laughs> yeah. we didn't find a good answer and yeah, we just think so we'll just let someone else define it. That's I think was what we said. Not our problem. Um so here's a more uh neither here nor there kind of question. Um, on Hank's last question on the 4.3, I'm okay with what we do. I probably, if you went back in the Providence, I'm probably the person to put those two things in there. And so I yeah. have to keep them, but, and I think there are other documents that do that, that say, here's our specific term, or here's the same term and it's meant to match this, or it's meant to be a subclass of this other term to find this other document. So. Okay. So, um interact with Roman to make sure that, yeah. yeah. So I, I was to say, like, I didn't understand why he didn't understand, but. <laughs> right, right. Um, um, but that's why we're having reviews. Um, <clears throat> claim is the only definition that doesn't explicitly call it what consumes and produces it. I don't have a proposal there, I'm with Hank. <laughs> yeah, it was just, we are not creating our own section for claim. So that was, I think, the only reason that this is, is up there, and it is how it is. So claim is too so, claim is too abstract to to pin down. Yeah, so we yeah. choose not to. I, I think um, I would say that Hank's point about it is neither a conceptual message nor a role. That's the main point because the con produces and consumes are um, what with this respect to a conceptual message. It's an element that appears in multiple uh, conceptual messages, and so yeah. Um, everything that uses a claim, you have to look at that other thing, the conceptual message to say what consumes and produces that. And so it's in there by proxy, by looking at the message that embeds the claim. But it is itself not a, not, not a, uh, not a message. And so that's why I think, um, uh, Hank's second sentence there is in fact the real answer. So. Okay, good. All right. And so, uh, I just wanted to bring up the diffs so we can see them i'm going to mark this won't fix because that was what that's the things we're going to reply on since it's a combination know, you're using that yeah. label of saying things that we need to send email about yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. Yeah. uh even though um inside the PR, the pull the request description should, if it doesn't already, should probably reference that without using the fixes, you know, one of those magic keywords. Yes, uh, so it linked. would, but, but, but the PR doesn't, uh, this PR at this point doesn't, doesn't use the magic keywords anyway. No, but it should link, um, those two should be linked somewhere so you can find one from the other. Uh, yeah, so right now they're linked by this. Okay, excellent. Okay, you so think? section three, three constant, consequently. Mm -hmm. uh in consequence consequently yep. single word fix um and then this one is adding yep. that it consumes appraisal policy for attestation results yep good catch from roman yep. yeah okay so this one remains open close that uh, foundational issues in section five. Okay, so I collected quite a few things together. We have nothing attached to this yet. Um, yeah, this is where uh, I, I'm reading his text. I think I understand all of his text, but I can't understand what it refers to without having the document up, and I haven't done that exercise yet. So I don't know. Yeah, I think we'll have to leave this there. Do you want me to sign it to you, Dave? Sure. Okay. To be honest, I was just tired. I was like, oh, no, I'm not doing this. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that was my reaction, too, when I first read this. So. <laughs>
But yeah, I'm happy to take that one. Sign Panway to that. Uh, did we get all of your changes here? Um, that's not. Yeah, are we ready to merge the thanks pull request? Did we get to all the issues? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, I edit them um, consecutively, and uh, uh, if I have don't have a comment and an issue anymore, then we are done. I think we're done for all of these here now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I did all the individual commits at least. Ugh. Draft pull requests. I don't quite understand what draft pull requests. Although I've I've turned things into drafts, you I don't can't quite understand. merge it before yeah, it, it's it just puts a lock. It just puts a lock on it to make sure yes. that no one auto auto merges it. C correct. Yes. It's when you want to put something out there for a review, but you're not done with it yet. It's a work in progress. Is typically what it's used for. But it says it's you know it's ready for review. What you want, what the no, draft is, what you no, want. No, 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 no. That is the button to mark it as ready for review. That is not a current status. That is a uh, directive. Uh, yeah. When okay. you click that, no, no. it removes the draft status. You know, I get it. But what I'm saying is, you mark it for as a draft because yeah. you want review, and then you mark it as ready for review when it's done being a draft. Correct. Correct. So that's all so, I'm saying. But I agree that that button is confusing. It should say mark as ready for review and not ready for review. Right. Yeah. Okay. Ned's com commented here. Uh, what is meant by having established? Really, I I kind of edited, put these in with the thing in the wrong place so you can't see the thing easily. Um. Okay, I, there we go. I, I have a view as to what I think relevance means. Let me read uh, Ned's response here. Okay. Um, Ned might be thinking the same thing as I'm thinking. Um, uh, so I'm going to pull up the document here. Yeah, well, I just based on, you know, evidence is appraised by a verifier to establish its relevance, compliance, and timeliness. I think all three of those are important concepts to me. Relevance, let's say you took um, um, uh, evidence from one type of thing that you weren't expecting and sent it to a uh, verifier. Okay. Right. And the verifier said, well, this isn't actually for me, right? You're sending me an Intel thing and I only understand how to parse, you know, um, ARM evidence or, you know, you're sending me an, uh, a, a dice thing and I only understand eats or something like that. It's not relevant because I can't even tell whether it's compliant or not because you're sending it to the room verifier kind of thing. Well, I would say a different one. You sent me your geographical coordinates. Yeah. And I'm the, the my my relying party doesn't care where you are. Well, that's okay. Right. I mean, that's your, okay. Your right. Because... policy doesn't measure specific claims that it doesn't mean that the evidence isn't relevant. It means certain claims aren't relevant, but this is relevance as to, by the, uh, to the evidence as a whole here. The evidence is relevance is in the sentence. Yeah. Okay. So that's, not, that's not what I'm saying is that you've said something to me that's, a, that's, I don't need to know to make a decision. You're saying that it's irrelevant right. because I can't make a decision on it. I can't. I can't. I can't really assess its compliance. Right. Right. Okay. Once it's relevant, I can assess its compliance. Once I assess its compliance, then I can assess its timeliness. Although it's latter, you can do in either order. So I'm not sure. I think the question is whether we we're supposed to we we want to retain that word relevance. Is is that what I understand? The I think it's an important word to retain, and I think. From Ned, your response, I think you think it's important, although I think you and I have overlapping um, uh, meanings of relevance. You're overlapping example cases. So. Yeah, <clears throat> there could be, I mean, there, I, I, I don't think that this was, the word relevance was trying to be extremely precise. Right. It's just that there's a lot of cases where uh, the information is not, providing um, you know any meaningful context for making a, a decision about what a, what a relying party is going to decide on so is there an know. aspect here where um, you might send for reasons of uh, you might send uh, evidence that you don't know is irrelevant but, but you just always send it because you, you can't know when what you're supposed to say when it's so one, and not. one of the practical 
cases that we've run into is when you're writing the a tester, the testing environment, you it's for for you know efficiency reasons, it's easier to to report more information than what you actually need to make the trust decision, and then you rely on a mask in the in the reference values mm -hmm. to tell the verifier to ignore some stuff. Yep. And so what's masked off is irrelevant. It's there. It's irrelevant. I, I agree with that point of view. I think that's yep. a very common case that you're going to optimize the collection of evidence by reporting more than uh, you might uh, yep. actually need for a particular appraisal. Yeah, right. I agree. So going back to Erwin's questions, right? What is meant by having to establish that relevant evidence is relevant? We've been talking about that. Is the concern that the attester would provide evidence that's not relevant? Um, it's not a concern, but the answer is yes. It's just a fact, right? And then is that is that attack or attempt a subterfuge? Um, answer could be, but not necessarily, right? Because I think Ned and, and Peter's points is uh, where that would be common, not uh, not malicious in any sense. The, the 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 point is that there's something on the um on the endorsement side to help the verifier do the right thing well whether it's the endorsement side or the appraisal policy or, for evidence or the side. or the policy side yeah yeah so, so mostly oh. i'm hearing that we like the word uh relevance here um that it, it 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 doesn't sound like we have a lot of easy change to to uh clarify within this text um it's not an attack or an attempt at subterfuge but it's not worth saying that here so i wonder if this is one where we answer in email and only make a change if roman comes back with a follow-up works for me Because right now, I'm not sure what to say if we would say something, right? But if we say, here's kind of what we mean, um, but there's nothing, uh, there's no obvious change that we could come up with to make to the document, let us know if that's sufficient. Um, yeah. And he comes back and says, well, maybe you should say this, and we, then we might actually have a suggestion. So, Are we concerned that the attester would provide evidence that is not relevant? No. no. We're not concerned that this is a... Um, that w that would happen we're not concerned we, we have no concern that there is a security issue with that happening right it's more the other way around yeah yeah, yeah. that we couldn't make it that and and so the attesters in some sense is erring on the side of over don't want to say over attesting i don't know oh yeah you <laughs> over the, over sharing over yeah, sharing right uh, and, here and you could go along with that saying okay in the security considerations or privacy considerations we do cover the issue of uh over sharing and down in that section right over sharing in a privacy sense yeah that's already in the document so other than that concern there's no other concerns with over sharing other than what's already covered in privacy Okay. All right. Great. Let's uh, move on then. Uh, ouching. Does, is that the right one? I've already done that one. Reliable to be clarified. Okay. So read uh, Hank's proposal here. Okay. Yep. I agree with Hank's uh, proposal there. That sounds fine because I, I understand reliable could have multiple meanings. Do you mean reliable in a losses in a lossy sense? And we're saying no, reliable in a trust sense. So I think Hank's uh, wording is fine. Okay. So Hank, uh, 
do a pull well, request, I guess. Ned's wording that uh, Hank incorporated there, so. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, one of you do a pull request, I guess. Is the... I can bib up on. Reliable, or I'll do it anyway. Conceptual <laughs> <Okay>. messages. <laughs> well, if, if you don't want to do it, then reassign it to me. Um, I'm not really happy about the way that that. I wanted to collect them as a, you know, quote, but it doesn't really. Uh, wrapped. Um, I need to look in, in context. What is section eight point two? What's the title of it? Endorsements. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Um, now we can go back to endorsements and reference values. All right. Go. And 8.3 is reference values. Yes. I'm just trying to read Roman's comment again. <clears throat> we define it in multiple places. Uh, if you, but if you skipped over it and didn't internalize it, then you read it later and you're kind of like, what was this the thing again? Yeah. Exactly. So his eight point three comment sounds like he was a little bit confused. The restatement point uh, about didn't you already cover this? What's the difference? And if I remember right, one of them was a definition, the short version, and the other one was the long elaboration with discussion. Yeah. And so that part was uh, intentional. It's not a restatement; it's an elaboration on right. Um, and, and Hank, did the word nobody was missing here? Very good. What a concept was the concept nobody? I just put that word in. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for editing, Mike. <laughs> um, I, yeah. I don't have a better term for it. I think that's the best term that we still have. Um, Maybe one day I will wake up before we are off 48 and it comes to me, but uh, at the moment I, I don't have any So I don't have any other ideas for this one other than response and email. Okay. Oh, this is great. We're going through so many of them. That's because we took the hard ones and you just decided them to me. Or you <laughs> or Hank. Right. That's the best known method. Yeah. It is. That's how you get to lots, I agree. We are also very used to this. So um we have experience now. Um eight point four is uh what's the title of that section? That's attestation results, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, uh, here, um, uh, without reading Ned's or Hank's comments yet, my first reaction to this one is: all we got to do is add a uh, forward reference to the section that covers uh, the oversharing of you know, privacy stuff, right? Because he says it also immediately suggests, well, that's fine as long as there's a forward reference. So that that would be my simple uh, proposal here. But now I can read Hank and and, and Ned your comments. So. Okay, I think uh, Ned's comment, if I understand your main point, is you can abstract out and not mention specifics in this section, like passports and driver's licenses, sorry, sorry like name and date of birth or whatever, that mm -hmm. could only be uh, talked about in the privacy section and use some more generic wording here. And I think that's what you're proposing, Ned. I think that would yeah. be fine. I would still keep a, keep a, uh, maybe a forward reference here, depending on the wording. Um, so, but is this additional words to add, or is that something that I just missed? Um, I thought that I, I read that Ned, were you proposing that's a replacement for the text that, um, 
the Groman is. Uh, I'm trying to remember, I think that was being proposed as a replacement. Okay. It's replace the other sentence with your sentence. Uh, We're trying yeah. to locate it here. Where it, was it? In the the second paragraph in the bottom, first sentence. The thus attestation results often need to. Yeah, right there. Well, but here's just that the that's the next sentence actually. That's what I thought. Ned's Ned's quote oh. is the next sentence. Oh, I it, see. Yeah, that's what I suspected. We already said that. <laughs> Um, then in the next, I think the co comment, I think the comment below it is the relevant point. <clears throat> we don't need to. We can just remove the controversial text if we're able to, you know, convey the idea that the results can contain privacy-sensitive content, and, but that there's ways to deal with it. Yeah. And one we may, and it may be that the a tester is relying on the verifier to protect some privacy by through obfuscation. I don't know how we. Uh, so, so I think that what you're saying is we should just delete this this part of the sentence. Yeah. Um. So what I'm thinking is to replace that part of the sentence with something that um, makes Ned's points about. Uh, it can contain privacy sensitive content um, as discussed further in section, whatever the one is, it's our privacy section. Yeah, just forward ref your reference it so that we, we can put all the discussion about privacy in one spot and not have it sprinkled throughout. Oh, something like that. Well, but keeping uh, Ned's yeah. wording about um, uh, can contain something like can contain privacy sensitive content as discussed, and that's what goes in the dot 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 part. Yeah. As discussed, you know, okay, sure. Something along those lines, anyway. Go for your words, Smith. Uh, all right. I'll, um, sign myself to put that in okay all right next freshness too detailed that's what we get for <laughs> ned okay <laughs> you were really observation we don't believe it refers any changes okay yeah <laughs> All right, so it sounds like uh, Ned and Hank, you both believe uh, no change is fine, and I'm fine going along with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If anything, and I'm not sure we need to make any change, but if anything, right, we could add a sentence or something at the top of the section saying what the purpose of this is, right? This is... Uh, intended for uh, those creating, you know, protocols, uh, whatever, protocols or solutions to um, understand the answers available, or at least some of the directions available to them. So, but I don't know if we need to do that. I just don't know if that helps um, uh, explain why it stands out rather than just letting it stand out, so. Uh, so this section is intended for those creating protocols to create, and then what did you say? I don't remember. <laughs> um, my point is uh, yeah. for those creating protocols or uh, solutions to um, uh, it was something along the lines of uh, making sure they understand the options of or the the options available to them to ensure freshness. But uh, probably a better way to phrase that. So, uh, yeah. So I would say exactly that, and and I'll add that sentence. But I would say also in a, a response, I would say. Um, that we thought that the freshness was the different freshness decisions were in fact architectural dis dis choices in yes. the in the solution, and that Say and that. that that the that's why we went to that level of detail so that nobody um, in, in in essence the different freshness solutions uh, cause 
uh, non-interoperable uh, solutions, right? Because if you didn't implement the same freshness guarantees, then you're not interoperable. And so it's an architectural decision as to what you want to do. And we want to make sure that um, um, people are consciously making this decision, not just, you know, right. stumbling into it, right? Uh, uh I think you should take this action, yeah. this this one, and write what you just said. And yeah. uh, I mean, if you if you think that that is good to put into the document at the top of section ten, then we can, remove, then we can remove the won't label if you want to do that, because now we're going to put in the explanation in there, not just email. Yeah, yeah, I think it's important to have the observation that interoperability uh, okay. around freshness is architectural, and therefore you have to design. A solution with that in mind right and 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 i think that that uh, other other thing that i'll in the email is that um i think that we needed that level of detail and i think the reader needs that level of detail in order to be convinced that we've covered all the options mm -hmm. right um and and i don't know we might have wound up with like 12 different freshness options or started that way, but we wound we we, we reduced them. I think it's to three, right? So, mm -hmm. um, I, I I personally think that it's common approaches. We don't say that it is a uh, complete, right? There's no oh, looks that there's only three, but there's uh, so that's why I don't know if options is the right word. But uh, I just I was just looking at the top of section ten. Right now we use the term common approaches and not uh, options. So sure, well, sure. That, um, we don't actually say what you are saying, and we should. I, I, I think so. Yeah, no, I yeah. So so that's the point. I I'm not convinced there's there's a fourth option is what I'm trying to say. Um it might it might we I was not convinced there was a third option until Hink convinced me. And now I'm convinced. And so I can't say that there's not a fourth. So, so, okay. so if there's a gap, it's that the focus is on freshness of re claims reporting as opposed to or uh, testation uh, results. Yeah. Uh, no, there's a yeah. So well, we don't, and there isn't a focus on freshness of claims collection, which is sort of hidden by the attesting environment to some degree. Um, but I, I don't know if it's an interoperability. I don't, I don't think it's an interoperability challenge. Um, I would not go that far um, because it might be in some cases, meaning mm -hmm. I don't think we have to have that discussion in the document. I think just having a generic summary, like Michael is saying is fine. The freshness section does cover evidence and attestation results and claims right now. All of that discussion is kind of woven in there mm -hmm. um, in a way that I think I'm hesitant to try to change, um, but I'm fine adding a preamble like uh, Michael is saying. Yeah. My All point right. is that it's really detailed, but it's still not necessarily covering of everything you need to think about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it possible for the appraisal policy for evidence to also contain sensitive information? Yes. Well, I agree with that answer. Um... The appraisal policy for evidence. <laughs> so that's, that's just right. Yes, and then we make a no fix. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If, if, Next. No, Next. Appraisal, the appraisal policy says, you know, if, if the user ID is Hank, then the the rest of these things are skipped, right? Yeah. That, or the appraisal policy says, if it's Hank, he's only allowed to do certain operations between the following hours or the following right. days of the week or whatever, and that by itself can be privacy sensitive. That's exactly so. Yeah. So the so that's revealing true. the policy is it could be yeah. So, and so uh, we're here, all convinced that's the case. So what are we yeah. supposed to do about it? <laughs> uh, he added this on the privacy consideration section, and so I think he's observing that in the privacy consideration section we cover privacy issues with everything except for the appraisal policy. And so maybe one add a sentence about uh, that privacy applies to approval policies too, because it's not mentioned in that section. We cover evidence, station results, and so on, but um, appraisal policies aren't mentioned. So appraisal policies <clears throat> are correlating disparate yeah. PII, which is a privacy problem. So somewhere we at least need a sentence mentioning appraisal policies in the privacy consideration section is his main point. Yeah. Yeah. Volunteers to do that. 
I can I can look uh, take a look at it if you want. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Ned. Ned. Uh, I can't believe we're going to go through all of these. We got six minutes. We can do it. We can do it. Yeah. Even if all we do is we send the last one to Michael. <laughs> <laughs> that is a that is a good choice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There you go. Um, section 11, conceptual net messages. Isn't, didn't we already have one that we talked about conceptual messages? Yeah, but a, this is not, I, I, this is section a, 11, conceptual message. And 11 is privacy considerations. So maybe I titled it poorly. Yeah. Uh, at, least he quote, at least it's quoted in the text there, so. Okay, I think his real question is, is this text saying that if there isn't native object level confidentiality protection, the transport protocol should provide these protections? Um, I think the answer is yes, and maybe some uh, more clear sentence worded like he worded that might be appropriate. So meaning not necessarily in replacement of that text, right? You could mm -hmm. say, you could augment that sentence immediately following, you know, you know, for example, if there isn't native object level confidentiality protection in the conceptual mess in, in the um, if I prefix this with for example, right, you could just say in the evidence, uh, because it's just an example, right? The could the transport protocol should provide these protections. I <clears throat> I think I read this as Roman getting tripped up on the term term protecting protocols. Which we didn't haven't used anywhere else. Sure, something like that, Michael. Uh, and sorry, I'm just now noticing uh, Ned commented three days ago, and I'm comparing the language there with the language there. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're on the same lines, Ned. You just said the same thing three days ago as I was thinking now. So I think I'm finally channeling you. Okay. <clears throat> this apparently is how. But I, I formed my own opinion before of... being biased by Ned's. That turns out I'm thinking exactly the same as Ned. There <laughs> you go. Is, Two independent yeah. confirmations must be right. <laughs> but I'm told this is this is why all the uh, all the plagiarism charges in the music industry happen right is because people didn't know that they had actually read it when they thought of something right <laughs> yeah it has more to do with the way your neurons are programmed and we're not that different than you, than you think we are yeah. once you word the question the right way everybody can come up with the same answer independently yeah <laughs> <laughs> is it is it true that <laughs> exactly. all right um Okay, so anyone want to take this on? <clears throat> I can do it if you want. Thank you, Ned. Since you kind of already did it, yeah. I kind of already did it, so that's an easy <laughs> one. There you go. Okay. Besides, the next one looks harder, so. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he has suggested text even, so. You know, this uh, should be really easy. Yeah. Um, now we're not the ones that I did not get to reading. So I didn't think we we're going to get this far. So I didn't, <laughs> didn't have time to finish. Well, I read them at a superficial level enough to say that they were how they're related, but then they kind of completely like I couldn't have told you what I read 10 minutes later. Um, Section 12 is security considerations, security considerations uh, but there's different subsection. 12.1 is a tester and a attestation key protection, okay? And then all of his comments are on under 12.1, right? Now he's got a 12.2 up there. 
Yeah. That's integrity protection. Okay. Uh, can you add like security considerations in the title of this one? Need what security considerations in the end or something? Um, well, this one might need to be broken into multiple them in the future. So uh, I I agree. So um, let's uh, um, I will break out the 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 typos, and I suspect we're happy with the suggested text here. Yes. New and I don't know about the rest yet. Uh, the 12.1.1, is it more accurate to say that is another one where he provides text? Essential value add provided by okay. RATS is for the relying party to be able to trust the attester, even if the user or owner is not trusted. Yes, a foundational security assumption of a RATS architecture is that a relying party is able to trust the attester, even if the owner, user or owner is not trusted. Um, I don't think that's true. Yeah. I don't know if that is more, I think the answer is, is it more accurate to say? No, it's either equally accurate or less accurate, depending on your interpretation. And he's, so, so, he's, <clears throat> so he's added the word foundational instead of essential. It's not an assumption, I think. All right. It's the result of the rats, not an assumption, which appear, the word assumption to me means something you start by assuming is true rather than you doing something to make be true. Right. Where, right. I agree with you. So this, this wording here is wrong. That's the right. point. And other Correct. than that, it's essentially there. So I think that's almost a not don't fix. Correct. Won't fix for that. Is, is, um, is that why you were saying no, Ned, as well? Or did you have a different uh, uh, problem? I was, <clears throat> so my, I is proposing an alternative. Okay. statement to what Roman proposed. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh yeah. There's more down here. Sorry. Ah, okay. And more. It's maybe a little more. Weekly. And then Ned says so here. Let's, let's come back to this one next meeting then. But yeah, I agree. Let's not as, easy ones. let's not assign it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, let me know if you're going to be there on Tuesday or not. And I, what I thought I heard was everyone but Hank. Yep. Okay. Great. Talk to you then. All right. Okay. See you then. Bye. 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 Bye.